Well, for years, we women have been saying that we're different than guys, right? Well, if you're shaking your head with me and agreeing, then good, because all along, we ladies have been right. Did you know that cardiovascular disease accounts for 500,000 deaths in women annually? Well, February is National Heart Health Month, and for women, we want to share some facts that might make you think twice about speaking up and out about your heart. Dr. John Eleteriotis is co-author of The Woman's Heart, and he's here to share more on this must-read book. Dr. Eleteriotis, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Cardiovascular disease, you say, kills more women than breast cancer annually. Is that really right? It really is right, but it doesn't get quite the uh, publicity or acknowledgement that it should. And that was one reason behind this book. Let's talk about the books you brought. You've co-authored this particular book, but you've brought two with you. Explain. Well, um, I started out with a book called Your Heart, okay. which is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's a bunch of questions and answers about heart disease, all questions that I hear every day and patients can't really remember the answers when they're in the office, so I wrote them down. And then my publisher came to me and she said, John, who do you think buys books? She women. Said, women. <laughs> women right. buy books. <laughs> so then we, uh, we grew the woman's book out of the Your Heart book, and it focuses entirely on the woman's heart and how that's different mm. and requires different care. Now, we want to talk about the five under-recognized facts that we as women should know about our hearts and even that men should know about the women in their lives. And we've got them listed really interesting. I want to go with the first one. And, and this is the first one saying, the woman's heart is linked to her emotions. And I want you to tell us about that and how that relates to the broken heart syndrome because this is true, true and this is real. It's absolutely true and absolutely real. And I just want to emphasize for you, Desiree, that uh, I understand the woman's heart physically, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the emotional aspects, but I really wish I understood the woman's heart in depth emotionally. Now, that would be a book if any man <laughs> could explain the woman's heart. <laughs> to say the least, I'm sure. But there is this link between emotions and the heart that exists in women, and, and it doesn't in men. And I'll tell you a brief story about Catherine. Catherine uh, is a 53-year-old uh, executive. She got back to her house at the end of her working day, and she found the door locked, the locks were changed, and her suitcase was packed and on the stoop, the front stoop of the house. And there was a note from her husband that he never wanted to see her again, mm. and he and his girlfriend were on holiday in Jamaica. Mm. So this was very, very upsetting to Catherine. She didn't know what to do. She got in the car to drive to her best friend's house. En route, she couldn't breathe. She was able to pull the car over. A lady in the car behind her stopped, noticed that she was very ill, and she was taken to the hospital. Everything, Desiree, showed heart attack. The EKG showed a heart attack. The echocardiogram showed a heart attack. Hmm. And she was taken to the catheterization lab to find the blockage. Come to find out, the arteries were entirely clean. And there was no other reason for her heart to stop functioning except it was broken. It was broken because of this intense emotional event. Wow. And this doesn't happen in men. It happens in women. Just in women. It was just recognized about 15 years ago, and it was first discovered in Japan. So it's called the Takotsubo syndrome. It's named after an octopus pot where the octopus goes in, gets his head stuck, and then can't get out. And that's what fishermen do to catch the octopus. And that shape of the clay octopus pot is the abnormal shape that the woman's heart takes on when it's broken like that. Unbelievable. I want to move you to number two. The women feel, women rather, feel heart attacks much differently than men. Indeed they do. And you know, the quintessential um, understanding of a heart attack is in a man where he's middle-aged or older, clutches his chest in pain, and goes for evaluation to the emergency room. Well, come to find out that women oftentimes don't feel a heart attack the same way. They may not even have chest pain. What are our symptoms? You may feel only a sense of being unwell, okay. a sense of impending doom, you know something bad's happening, a little nausea, mm. and dizziness. Okay, let's go to number three. The woman's heart is actually physically smaller than a man's? It is physically smaller, and um, that means that everything we do to the heart is more dangerous in a woman. Especially if you, wow. if you figure a coronary bypass, the coronary arteries are about as big as the lead in a pencil, and we have to put 18 stitches in there. Wow. So if the heart is smaller, there's going to be a much higher danger level. And then people say, well, John, 
women are smaller than men. Wouldn't you expect the heart to be smaller? But then when we correct for that body size difference, the heart is still smaller than you'd expect it to be. And there's an interesting reason for that. Oh, tell me. And that reason is those wonderful curves that a woman has. Oh, there we go, ladies. Hello. Those wonderful curves, Desiree, are made up of fatty tissue. Ah, okay. And fatty tissue doesn't need much blood supply. It's not like muscle or bone or organs. Okay. So it doesn't need much, and that way the heart can be a little bit smaller. Let's go to the next one, number four. The woman's heart lives in a hormonal, what is that particular word again? Milieu or Milieu. environment. Okay. Yeah. And, and for men, it's pretty simple. The heart lives in a, in a simple hormonal milieu. We have one hormone, everybody knows what that is, and it's always active. Mm -hmm. In women, it's a much more complex environment where the hormonal milieu changes um, in different parts of the month, different parts of a woman's life. You've got estrogen, progesterone, and a remarkable balance. Wow. But those hormones protect a woman from arteriosclerosis completely, entirely, until change of life. Let's go to number five, because when we're dealing with, again, another fact, an under-recognized difference, is that intimacy is very important to a woman's heart health. Yes, and what happens, Desiree, is say a woman has uh, the finding of blocked arteries, and she goes on medications, or she has a stent, or a bypass, or she has a heart attack. That woman is often afraid to resume an intimate relationship mm -hmm. with her spouse. And the message that I want to get across to women is not only is it okay for you to do that, but it is imperative that you do that. Wow. It makes your heart healthier if you resume an appropriate intimate relationship with your spouse. That's right. It's all about love, Dr. Lefteriades. It's yes? all about love. But the tip again for women is we've got to be more active in taking control of our lives and our hearts, right? Please. And please don't be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling right and you think it might be your heart, women are embarrassed. They're afraid to go and have it found to be nothing that they'll be embarrassed to be in the ER. Don't be. If you feel you're not right, you go and be evaluated. Call 911. That is right. The book, again, is called The Woman's Heart, an Owner's Guide, written and co-authored by Dr. John Eleteriades and Dr. Teresa Colin Glaser. Dr. Eleteriades, thank you so very much for being here. Thank you, Desiree. We appreciate it. Coming up next, we're in the kitchen with SSS Pizza when Connecticut Style returns, everybody. Stick around.